my brethren, rejoice in the Lord. Now he says, finally, because this is a final point. Finally, my brethren, who's he talking to? The church. Rejoice in the Lord. For me to write the same things to you is not tedious, but for you it is safe. He's saying, now I have to remind you again. It's so interesting, 2,000 years ago, the, pro the, the problems were still the same in the church. And I, it, it, are you listening? Oh, yeah, Paul, this is awesome. Praise the Lord. Good. Come back three weeks later, got to tell them the same thing again because they've already forgotten it. God must love you guys a lot. Finally, my, finally, my, finally, my brethren, the price of these cups just went up, Don, I'm telling you. Then. <laughs> finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord. For me to write the same things to you is not tedious. Well, it is to me, Lord, so help me. But for you it is safe. You need to know these things for your own survival. Next verse. Beware of dogs, beware of evil workers, beware of the mutilation. Now he's talking about, let me spin by this. He's talking here to Jews primarily, okay? So there he's talking to the Jews that have converted to Christianity. Be careful of the Jews. In other words, you've come out of religion, so now be careful that they don't try to bring you back into religion again. You found your liberty, don't let them put you back into chains. For we who are the circumcision who worship God in the spirit rejoice in Jesus Christ and we have no confidence in the flesh. Don't let them get you back into legalism. It's like people that say, I got saved. I went back into the Catholic Church to tell everybody that they needed to be free and a year later they're back in the Catholic Church and they're stuck there again. See? Because they're not yet ready to exercise their liberty in Christ. They need to learn more about it to stay free. Now verse, uh, uh, verse 4 please. Though, also, though I also may have confidence in the flesh... If anyone, and this is really awesome, so bear with me. This is the old man, right? This is the old Paul, and he's saying here, now I'm a new person now created in Christ. Well, we all know that, but I'm trying to show you and what you're doing now in the natural sense, what you're doing for a living, fathers, mothers, all that work and stuff. That's a part of your life that has its place. But as a Christian, you have a different place and a different purpose. All right? I want you to see from this for an example. Though I might have confidence in the flesh, if anyone else thinks he might have confidence in the flesh, I'm also. What does he mean? I had money, I had position, place, because that was, that was Saul on the road, right? Okay. So, he goes and he says, Circumcised the eighth day, the sock of Israel, or the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew with the Hebrews, concerning the law of Pharisee. Good God Almighty. He had all these DDSs and MBAs and everything else behind his name, right? Hallelujah. But this didn't impress God at all, because he still knocked him off his horse. Why? Because it wasn't his end game. It wasn't his purpose. See? God's plan for his life, it was time for him to get started on his training. And God intervened. Just That's why people get born again at the time they do. Now think about this. If you're thinking about divine destiny, you didn't find God. God found you. God introduced himself to you. He found me in a bar room. Where did he find you? You see, And the reason he waits so long, I think, is to get us to the point where we realize everything that the world said they had for me is, is useless. You may be raised in a Christian home, but you still got to discover God for yourself. He intervenes and so he shows up on the road to Damascus, but you still got to give him the authority to knock you off your horse. Now, if you think about it, Saul got to a point where he said, Who art thou, Lord? He asked the Lord a question. Who is this that's talking to me? I want to know. Same as Moses with the burning bush. See? Same as the three Hebrew children. I, I don't care what you're going to say. I'm, I'm going to follow my God. Throw me in the fiery furnace or not. There has to be a decision made where God is invited into your life. Not the born again experience, just a desire to know God. Yes. See? Yes. You follow me? And when that happens, God reveals himself to you. Some people take advantage of it and get saved. Other people just wipe their face and away they go. You follow me? So there is divine purpose in God revealing himself to you. Now he says of all these things, I was a Jew's Jew and I persecuted the church. Now look at this. Go to verse 7. But what things were gained to me, these I have considered lost for Christ. Now we're talking now about the exchange process. If you haven't already figured that out. Most of the folks that come to a prophetic house, an apostolic house, have to reach the point where they are learning, understanding, but then God will say to them, well, who are you going to serve? Not just show up at their ministry or their church. Who are you going to serve? What are you going to do? When are you going to turn your life over to me and allow me to perfect you for that for which I have called you? You all out there? Yeah. Another five minutes I'll be done. Please just pay attention. Thank you. For what things were gained to me, I've counted these things as lost. Now follow this carefully as we go on. 
This is where he talks about his new man now. His old values, he said, you think you're all proud, you think you've got everything, mm, successful businesses and all that kind of stuff. That's fine. But when God begins to take your attention away from those things, it's because he wants to train you because the time for your final ministry calling is come due. Now is the time your note's been pulled. See what I'm saying? Now God says you either do it now or you're not going to do it at all. How many people realize that time has come for them? Yeah. All right, good. And that's exactly what he's explaining to these people in Philippi. Yes, indeed, I count all things loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Jesus Christ, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things. No, he hasn't suffered the, all things. The things that he lost were more concerned with his old manner of, of, of per perception, his old career mentality. Yeah. Do you follow me? Yeah. What I'm trying to get you to the point of realizing is most Christians haven't gotten there yet is that the thing you are called for is probably not the thing that you are most focused on. You haven't, you haven't yet discovered, if I focus everything on my divine calling, my purpose, what's going to happen to my business or my job? I have to stay. Those things you can be added. God can add those things to you because he knows you have practical needs and the way you accomplish those things is by the works of your hands. He knows that. But what I'm trying to tell you is very few places will place the, 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 the focus on the things that are in the spiritual purposes of God, not just the practical purposes of your life. And it has to become a very, very important focal point for you. Otherwise, your end game is going to be delayed, maybe, not, maybe even forfeited. He says, I count the things as loss, counting them as rubbish that I might gain Christ. Now look at the next verse and be found in him. Now that means, in the Greek text, it means that I have now picked up and made as my own his journey for my life. Not having my own righteousness. That's the folks that continue to make, uh, uh, not, uh, not apology, but continue to justify what they do versus what God wants them to do. But, that is, but rather that which is through faith in Christ. Remember I mentioned to you before that your destiny is going to be obtained by faith? And faith is demonstrated by what you honor. See? And what you honor turns out to be one of the most important things to you. You put your time, your talent, your energy, your trust, and everything else in the things that you honor or consider valuable. What I was just sharing there a minute ago, sometimes I think we think are valuable. Other people are simply manipulating you to think that they are valuable. Your most important, valuable thing you have is your walk with Christ, yeah? Your personal walk with God, not being encouraged by anybody else to keep going, but you personally have a fiery furnace in your belly for God. But that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith. Everything we get from God, our journey, our focus for the future, our dreams, our visions, and our purpose, all these things proceed directly from the life of faith which God says we must walk day by day in. And how does faith come? By hearing the word, yes? All right. Now, next verse. I want to get to the goody, goody part. That I, what's the purpose of all this struggling? That I might know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being conformed to his death. Now, that sounds kind of morbid. But when you think about it, he said, go back up. Yeah. He said that I might know him, not, not the icon. Remember we talked about that at the beginning? But we know him. We know the one from whom the icon came. A cross means nothing unless you know the one that was crucified on it. You follow me? I bear the cross of Christ in my heart. Yeah. That I might know him and the power of his resurrection. What does that mean? Newness of life. That's what he's talking about. And the fellowship of his sufferings. And I, I've got to figure out for myself, if I follow the cross, I'm going to be abused because of it. I'm going to suffer because of it. You may not be lashed. You may not be nailed to a cross. You may not suffer the rejection of all men. But you will be suffering the rejection of somebody sometime. You will have to fess up with your faith in the most inconvenient places. You have to sometimes pay the price by losing things that were valuable to you in order that you might receive something of far greater value. That's what Paul is saying. And conform to his death. Why would I conform to his death that I might be part of the resurrection? See? Until you realize you've got to lose everything that you love in order for God to come forth in you. Until that dies, there is no coming forth out of the ground. See? You still there? Yes. Next verse, look at this. And if by any means I may attain to the resurrection from the dead. This is amazing to me. A man of this level of obedience is, is concerned still that he'll make it into heaven. 
Boy, the American church must be way ahead of the Apostle Paul. Verse 12. This is the part I wanted you to get to. Not that I have already attained. And that word the attained means to seize a hold of. So what I'm trying to tell you is his journey and his progressive through to his ultimate purpose and his end. Amen? That end game or the end purpose was something that he had to continually uh, uh, desire all of the years, both the times he was in stocks and being beaten to the times that people were being saved, healed, and delivered through his ministry. All the things that you go through, you have to continue to hold in your heart the one thing that will keep you going, which is the knowledge that I have, I have all, not that I've already attained, but I'm still pressing forward. I, it says in the Greek, that to, uh, uh, not that I've already attained, meaning seize or take a hold of, uh, or am already perfect or perfected. That word there means to reach the finish line. So he's saying, I keep pressing forward. It's like someone, you know, trying to grab the carrot as it gets moving forward. He says, I may not be there yet, but I remind myself that that carrot's worth catching. The knowledge of what God has prepared me for is worth catching. And he said, not that I'm already perfect or perfected. I haven't even got the point where I'm at the finish line yet. He said, I haven't even seen the finish line in the natural, but I see it in my heart. Yeah. That's what keeps me coming to the house of God every week whenever the doors are open. That's what keeps me praying. That's what keeps me uh, pressing forward. It's what keeps me married. Wh whatever it is. See, This desire of my heart is what keeps me paying the price. And then he says, but I press on or uh, I follow after in the King James, which means I pursue. See, I, 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 still, I still have a desire in my heart to press on to the things which I know are there and I know God wants me to attain and I, I get delayed sometime, but I, I have a desire in my heart to keep going. I, I'm not going to quit. I, I'm going to keep going. Not, not that I, I see the finish line, but I know it's there somewhere. Yeah. Amen? And so he says, I continue to pursue it. Uh, I, can you put this in the King James? Because I study out of the King James. This new King James messes me up. Amen. Anybody else like that? Probably, right. probably not. Okay, good. Awesome. Not as if I already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after. I show the word follow, I pursue it. I keep pursuing. People say, what are you pursuing? You can't even see what you're pursuing. I can in my heart. This is, this is exactly what it says in the book of Hebrews. See? Abraham continued to press on, seeing a city whose maker and founder was God. See? Abraham, who still believed that he was going to have a, a son out of his own loins when he was 75 years of age. See? What? Look at some of you. I, sometimes I worry. The, the body of Christ to me is, 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 is childish oftentimes in the things that they want to possess. Ah, oh, Lord help me. There's nothing, believe me, if you had all the money in the world and all the happiness in your home and everything else, your little heart desires at this point, if you could all have it tomorrow, it wouldn't bring you the joy of knowing. Other, it wouldn't bring you any greater joy than knowing that Jesus Christ is your Savior and that when you die you're going to spend a lifetime with Him. Everything else, everything else, I don't care what you think about it, I'm telling you. But he says, but I follow after, that I might apprehend. And that word there, apprehend, is very powerful. It means to eagerly perceive and to make my own. I, I push through and I follow after that I may apprehend, in other words, or I may eagerly perceive it and desire of more than all of my heart to, 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 to make it manifest, to make it mine. So see, that I may apprehend it for that which I am also apprehended of Christ. Do you see what he says there in that last sentence? His main press and purpose is to find the purpose of God. You know what the prophet told me? You can close your Bibles. What the prophet told me back in Australia there many years ago, he said, if I were to show you what you're... He's speaking in the third person, uh, first person, as the Lord was talking to him. He said, if I were to show you what your purpose was, you, you'd, you'd blow yourself up. In other words, you'd destroy your ministry. And the reason for that was that he, he explains it to you part by part, purpose by purpose. Uh, uh, what do you say in football? One down at a time, I guess. I don't know. It's revealed to you as you are faithful, the next, the next, the next plan evolves. And as you're faithful to press into that, the next evolves. So actually what Paul is saying is one of the most powerful statements, I believe, in the whole New Testament. He says, can you put that back up on the screen for me? Kindly, that last verse, the last verse. Yeah. He said, I haven't got it yet. And I'm, I'm not that I'm already perfect, but I continue to press after that I might apprehend, that I might eagerly perceive and make my own that for which I am made his. 
Follow what I'm saying? He said, I desire with all of my heart that I, I may not be there yet, but I desire more than anything else that I might discover what my end purpose is for God as He revealed His end purpose for me.